You know what? I'm just gonna assume that like most Americans, you are burdened by stress. Now I'm not talking about the kind of stress that is triggered when you get pulled out to sea by a riptide or whenever your plane experiences some serious midair turbulence or even when going into combat. That kind of acute stress can't really be avoided. I mean, to escape danger, you more or less have to use your physical form's raw power and capabilities. In those life-threatening situations, your body is preparing to go to war with the situation so that it can live to see another day. Now, the stress I'm really talking about here, and the one that we should all be deeply concerned with, is the problem of chronic stress. It's the kind of stress that stalks you, the kind of stress that nips at your heels all day long and is constantly asking for your undivided attention. That kind of stress is caustic. It's unforgiving and unhelpful, and frankly, it's just making your life a living hell. Now, yeah, living hell is a pretty strong claim, but I'm prepared to back it up. Let's make a rough analogy here. Go ahead and look at your body, and then imagine it as almost like a light bulb which actually isn't so far from the truth as it is kind of this electromagnetic device of sorts. And let's say that the light bulb or your body is capable of handling approximately 200 watts of energy flowing through it at any one point. That means that whenever you're running at peak performance, those moments or hours in the day where you are just absolutely kicking ass, you've got quite a lot of energy running through you. But how long do you realistically think that you can maintain that sort of high wattage? An hour of peak performance? Two hours? I mean, at some point, you're gonna have to unplug the bulb to let it cool off. So the 200 watts, that was acute stress. That's, that's a good thing. But chronic stress is like leaving your light bulb on dim all day long. It's like having, you know, like a hum of 75 watts or so flowing through your body all the time. That's not good. For one, that light bulb is eventually gonna burn out, right? And unlike a light bulb where you can just go to a hardware store and replace it, you'll be hard pressed to find an exact replica of the avatar you're currently incarnated as. And second, having that kind of slight tension in your body at all times is going to affect your peak performance. If your body is using all of its fuel on navigating the temporary dramas of the day or repressing childhood memories into the subconscious, then good luck reaching any kind of pinnacle of human achievement. That might sound harsh, but it's true. On the earthly plane that we live in, our bodies have a finite resource supply that they can pull from. So you have a few options here. Firstly, you can change the literal structure and functioning of your machinery so that it can handle a higher wattage. AKA you can change your physical cells so that they can accommodate more energy. This isn't as out there as it seems. I mean, your cells are already adapting and evolving to the environment that they're currently situated in. All you're doing now is just purposefully introducing stimuli so that they evolve and adapt in the way that you want to evolve and adapt. The second thing you can do is to learn how to rest more efficiently. So this is things like sleeping deeper or recovering faster or learning how to quickly and completely turn off your muscles at will. The simplest and most effective way of doing all of that is actually by learning how to regulate your breath. Slow breath becomes a slow mind, becomes a slow body. And a slow body is a body that can actually rest and recover and recharge. And finally, if you want to learn how to manage your chronic stress, you'll have to start getting less time bound and more present. Ultimately, chronic stress is caused by just compulsive thinking about future and past, uh, anxieties, anticipations, expectations, or unresolved memories, repressed traumas. By actually training your mind via meditation not to dwell in the past or future, you can learn to avoid wasting unnecessary energy. Now, none of these strategies are easy by any means. They require time, discipline, effort and explaining how exactly to do them goes far beyond the scope of this video. So if you are interested, make sure to subscribe and look out for future videos and come to one of my live yoga classes. They're held a few times a month and they really teach you how to get the skills necessary to change your brain and your physiology. You're also welcome to write me an email and ask me any specific questions you have about your particular mind body setup. That's it for me. Thank you for your time and presence. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. 
As always, if you could hit the like button, maybe write a comment in the section telling me what you thought, what you agreed with, what you disagreed with so that we can connect a little bit. And otherwise, I will see you next Sunday. Peace.